<clears throat> and this will be recorded so we're able to share it um, after the presentation is done. Okay. And I see people are logging in, so I'll go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this week's Small Business Essential Webinar. Today, we're gonna to talk about government contracting. My name is TJ Daniels, and I am the director of the Iowa Center's Women's Business Center. The Iowa Center's Women's Business Center is funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Small Business Administration. You all will receive an email after this event from my colleague, Sierra, thanking you for attending today's session, information on how to connect to our speaker, as well as the form to complete. Please do us a big favor and take some time to fill this form out. This information allows us to continue providing free educational programming for small business owners in Iowa. Now go ahead and please take some time to locate the chat function on your Zoom screens so you can join the conversation by asking question, questions or adding comments. Also feel free to introduce yourself and your business in the chat. Please include your website or social media handles so, we'll know, so we can network with you that way as well. While you do that, I will let you know about a couple of, event, of events that we have coming up. Every Tuesday at 1030 to noon, we have a small business accountability group where you can network, set your goals or tasks for um, what you wanna complete during that session and have the group hold you accountable at the end. We could assist you with information or with hints and tips on um, how to complete your task. This Thursday starts a new eight week session of the DreamMaker program, which is our in-depth business planning class where we use life plan to create a business plan. There's still time to sign up. So if you would like more information, please feel free to contact me at tjdaniels at the iowacenter.org. For more information on upcoming events or to keep in, um, in contact or up to date with some of the small business grants that we are aware of, please visit our website and sign up for our newsletter that comes out every Tuesday or follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Now on to today's featured guest. Um, this is Donnell Connolly, the Deputy District Director at the U.S. Small Business Administration. Donnell works in conjunction with the district director in managing day-to-day -day operations as they administer the programs and services offered in Iowa by the SBA. She has worked in a number of capacities for the SBA, especially in the area of assisting small disadvantage in small businesses with government contracting information and opportunity. She continues to work closely with the business community and service providers informing them of the benefits of SBA programs and services. Zanel, thank you so much for spending time with us today and the screen is now yours. Thank you, TJ. Thank you to the Women Business Center to have this opportunity today to share information with you about basic government contracting um, information. Again, I am Donnell and I do provide oversight of our government contracting programs. And just briefly, as you may know, we assist small businesses um, throughout the state of Iowa through um, three core areas, capital counseling and contracting. We have a district office in Des Moines at the Neil Smith Federal Building, and we have a branch office in Cedar Rapids. And Jane Armstrong is the district director for the Iowa district office. So with that said, I will get into the heart of the presentation and just get into some of the um, components and resources of what it takes to do business with the government. Um, many of you that are on um, listening in today, thank you. Um, I don't know if you're currently doing business with the federal government or you have a consideration or interest or you're just sitting in to learn, but I hope today will um, impart some key information with you if you decide to do business with the federal government. So we wanna look at marketing and selling to the federal government. And we know in any arena that you're in, whether it's the federal contracting market or the non-federal contracting market, whether it be corporate or city, 
the key thing in being successful with your customer is how well you market and how you build those relationships and how you maintain those. So today we're going to cover the course objectives. We're gonna go over government contracting suitability and how the government buys goods and services. Am I eligible to, and this is through on SBA's website, how to register your business with the federal government, marketing your business and identifying federal opportunities, prime and subcontracting, SBA surety bond guarantee program, and then the available resources. So we're gonna get started with the government contracting suitability. So with this, you look at, are you a small business? And what defines what is a small business? You may take for granted that your company is a small business. The distinction is important for you when you wish to register for government contracting as a small business. To be a small business, you must adhere to the industry size standards established by the US Small Business Administration. As you register as a government contractor in the system for a management or system for a management award, you will also self-certify your business as small. So let me go back to um, the system for award management. That's what we refer to as the SAM.gov. And I have a slide on that, that we will get into the heart of that. But anyone looking to do business with the federal government, your first step is to going to be to register your business. And when you register as small, you're going to self-certify that you are a small business in the SAMS.gov. Now the SBA for most industries defines a small business either in terms of the average number of employees over the last past 12 months or average annual receipts over the past three years. In addition, SBA defines a U.S. small business as concern as one that is organized for profit, has a place of business within the United States, operates primarily within the United States or makes significant contribution to the U.S. economy through payments of taxes or use of American products, materials, or labor, is independently owned and operated, and is not dominant in the field on a national basis. So this is just the table of the census tract of the industry standards, which we call the NAICS, or the North American Industry Classification, Classification System and I would refer to today as industry standards. And so as you see on this chart, it shows on here of the NIX code, which is a six digit number. Um, your size is determined by annual receipts or number of employees if you should be in the area of manufacturing. So here are some key questions you can ask yourself today um, when you think of government contracting. First of all, are you ready? Um, do you have the capacity to deliver on the federal contracts? Do you have sufficient cash flow? And do you have demonstrated capability, past performance? And can you demonstrate successful past performance? And are you open to advice on growing your business? And when we talk about successful past performance, the federal government looks at two things in a contractor. Are you responsible and are you responsive? So now we want to look at, is your business ready again? And does the government buy what you sell? Does the government have a need for the product or the service that you provide? And one way to get started with federal contracting, um, and I will show you how to do re some re areas you can research, is to identify two to three federal agencies that have a need for the product or the service you provide. Because the government is so vast, it's good to streamline it and start small. And then you can ask yourself the questions today. Do you have systems in place to handle a government contract? Do you have the capital, the time, the staffing, materials, and reporting system? What is your ramp up time if you receive a contract? Do you have an existing relationship with a lending institution, a bank? Um, can you meet requirements such as insurance and bonding? 
Do you have accounting system in place, which was required by law to track your assets and your taxable income? It's required for federal contracts. And do you have federal, state, local government contracting experience? Your ability to compete in the federal marketplace is greatly influenced by your experience. Consider, consider starting in sub, subcontracting to get the experience that you need. So how does the government buy goods and services? Well, the government is the largest purchaser of goods and services. It buys over $500 billion with the goods and services each year. The federal government has an overall goal of 23% to do business with small business. And there are three methods of limiting competition to win government contracts which include the full and open competition. It has the small business set aside. Now this includes um, certification and certification based in social economic categories and which we will get into on the next page and then sole source opportunities. So when you look at these groups here within the federal government, they are referred to the social economic categories. As I stated, that this, the government is the largest purchaser. The federal government has an overall goal of 23% to do business with small business. And when that is broken out, there's an overall 5% goal to do business with women-owned small businesses, an overall goal of 12% for small disadvantaged businesses. This includes the 8A certified companies, and then there's an overall goal of 3% with hub zone businesses and an overall goal of 3% with service disabled veteran owned small businesses. And something that's very key within the government, down below it says set asides are reserved for small businesses between 3,500 up to $250,000. Up to $250,000 within the government, those dollars are reserved for small business opportunities opportunities for competition, for set aside, for sole source opportunities. So then we look at um, the primary methods of contracting. And so we look at micro purchases and this is used for purchases under $3,500 that do not require competition bids and paid for by the government purchase card or credit card. Now your simplified acquisition process is just what I had explained. Those dollars are reserved for small business opportunities. Um, the sealed bid bidding is used when government has a need for services, supplies that is clear, specific, and complete. No negotiation prior to award. And then your contract by negotiation is used for technical products, um, valued at $150,000 or more in negotiations allowed prior to award that's considered more than priced related factors. So I'm going to go over briefly. These are the certification programs through SBA. I'm just going to highlight them. But these same programs you see here are referred to within the government social economic groups. And that, that $250,000 and below, th these programs can benefit under um, that opportunity. So I'm gonna start with the 8A Business Development Program. And the 8A program is just what it says. It's a business development program. 8A received its name from the section of the law it was created for. The 8A program is a nine-year program. In the first four years are the developmental years and the last five years are the transitional years, preparing one to lead the program. The program was designed to um, build capacity and to grow small and disadvantaged businesses um, to the next level. And a key thing with the 8A program is when one is certified in the 8A program, they are also certified as a small disadvantaged business. But small businesses that are outside of the 8A program will self-certify their small disadvantaged status within the sams.gov. The benefit of the 8A Business Development Program are set aside contracts. The next program I will talk about is the Hub Zone Program. And the word hub is historically underutilized business zones. 
which helps small businesses in urban and rural communities gain preferential access to federal procurement opportunities. So the hub zones are located throughout the state of Iowa. And when small businesses um, have a principal office located in high unemployment or low income area, um, that is the first requirement to meet. The other requirements to meet is that you be a small business, a US citizen, and at least 35% of your employees be from a hub zone. When you meet those eligibility requirements, should you be located in a hub zone? And there's hub zone maps on our website that will tell you immediately if you're located in a hub zone. And the benefit of this program are set aside contracts. And then we have the Women Owned Small Business Contracting Program. This program is based upon industry sta standards. There are 759 industry standards that are approved for this program. So when, when a woman goes to apply, she first wants to see if she's eligible under one of those um, industry standards of the 759. And a woman can apply um, either as a woman-owned small business or an economically disadvantaged woman-owned small business. Um, the last program is the Veteran Certification Program, which was transferred to SBA in January of this year um, from the Department of Veterans Administration. And now the SBA will um, be taken, has already start taking applications for the veteran certification. And the certification allows service disabled veteran owned small business firms the opportunity to compete for sole source and set aside contracts across the federal government. And certified veteran owned small businesses may also compete for sole source and set aside contracts for the VA. So one thing I wanted to quick, share with, oh, go ahead. Quick question. Um, so are nonprofits able to be um, contractors with the federal government? No, it's for for-profit businesses. There are, there are nonprofit opportunities, but when it's awarding contracts like this, it's for for-profit businesses. So Thank you. You're welcome. So the other thing I wanted to share with you, there is a tool on SBA on our website, our government contracting website, and it's called um, there's the Am I Eligible tool. And this will answer questions below as to your eligibility. And so you can take this assessment and find out if you're eligible for the 8A, the woman-owned small business, or the hub zone. If you find out excuse me, that you're eligible for this program and you are interested in applying, your first step should be is to reach out to the Apex Accelerators, what used to be called the Procurement Technical Assistant Center. I have a link um, on one of the slides toward the end of the presentation where you can just link on it and um, access their information. But the Apex Accelerators will be a valuable resource to you as you look to get registered to do business with the federal government. So we also want to look at where do you register your business? And I mentioned this earlier, and it's at the sams.gov, which is the system for award management. And any business looking to do business with the federal government must be registered in this database. And this is where companies will come and register your business. You will establish a user account and you will register yourself as a small business. Once you register yourself as a small business, you're gonna be found on what we call the SBA um, Dynamic Small Business Search Area. This is the SBA profile. And there's a certain area where small businesses can be found. And I bring up this page here because who looks at identifying small businesses? Well, federal contracting agencies prime contractors, but on this particular page here, when you apply for one of our certification programs and you're approved, it's going to show the dates on here. And if your application is pending, it's going to show this on here. So this is where the federal contracting officers come to verify your certification. And the only ones that can enter this vital information is our SBA headquarters. So when you are approved in a certification, 
they're going to enter your dates of your approval and when it ends. Another place in SAMS.gov is we talk about contracting opportunities and contracting opportunities can be found in SAM.gov and contracting opportunities of 25,000 and above are posted here and it goes up to the multi-millions of dollars. So we wanna look at marketing your business and identifying federal opportunities. And I had mentioned earlier, it would be good in the federal government if you could identify two to three federal agencies um, to work with, those that would have a need for the product or your service you provide. So you might say, well, how do I get started in identifying opportunities with the government? Well, there's a website called the Acquisition Gateway. It is a forecast of contracting opportunities. The goal of this too is to provide a nationwide dashboard of upcoming federal contracting opportunities. So if you know anything about the federal government, it runs on fiscal year from October 1st to September 30th of the next year. So each quarter, first, second, third, and fourth quarter, the agencies have forecast lists and you can begin to look at their forecast lists of what they're projecting. And through those projectings, you can identify those agencies that have needs for the product or the service you provide. And you see the filters here, so you can begin to do a search as to identify potential agencies to work with. Another area you can use is the SAMS.gov, which is the contracting opportunities area where you can search in that area as well. And then also remember the resource I had mentioned that can help you do all these things, which is the Apex Accelerators. So we're, we're going to look at um, identifying federal buyers and getting to know them and building those relationships and maintaining those relationships as well. And then identify the agency contracting procedures and those who make buying decisions and focus on areas in your niche and prioritize and make contacts through mail, through small business events and network your business. Um, when you might find out when you're targeting agencies um, that there are registrations you have to um, do depending on the customer you're working with. So find out if your target agencies require you to register in their database in order to do business with them. Registering your business is not enough to obtain a federal contract. Ultimately, you are responsible for your own success and you will need to market your business to attract attention from the federal government. And the one thing that we emphasize through the years, what makes a successful contractor is how well you market, market, market. So then you want to get to know your agencies that buy your product and services. You want to find your niche competition is fierce. Understand areas of government spending and know your competition and their contacts. Now, I just showed you where in the SAMS.gov, where small businesses are located and anyone can access the dynamic small business search area. Just like contracting officers or prime contractors, that database is free. So I encourage you, those of you who, who are um, working with the federal government, to find out who your competitors are and conduct a search in the dynamic small business search. And you can know your competitors on a local level and on a national level. Another key thing within the federal government, when I talk about contracting officers, when they have something coming down the pipeline, the first thing they are required to do when they're looking to outsource that is to conduct market research. And that's why it's important for you as a small business to do your own research and using those databases that can help you conduct those searches, such as SAM.gov contracting opportunities or the acquisition gateway or using the resources of the, the Apex accelerators. Um, one thing that I didn't put on here today, but can be very advantageous to you is that the SBA has a scorecard that it keeps um, where their goals are. Are they meeting their goals? Are they not? 
and I didn't put the link on that because they're updating the overall scorecard and SBA actually grades these federal agencies as to are they meeting their goals and they're given grades. And if they're not meeting their goals, then they have to um, docu you know, provide documentation or, uh, and provide information to SBA of how they're gonna meet those goals. So it's important for you as a small business when you look at working with the federal government is to learn as much as you can. And one thing I meant to mention about the 8A Business Development Program is that it is a nine-year program. So the years go fast. So this is my thing I like to say. The 8A program is not a program you just apply for. The 8A program is a program you prepare for. So you want to use the resources that are available to you in order to prepare for that particular program. So now we're going to look at, um, in the government, there are three customers to whom you should target your marketing efforts. You want to look at who are the buyers? Well, who are the buyers? They may include contracting officers or others who can select the procurement methods and conduct the procurement. Buyers have enormous influence on the buying process, but are also steered by influencers to whom they are often gatekeepers. So who are the influencers? They are program managers and high level decision makers who generate the requirement for a product or service. Another key thing to identify when you're marketing to a federal agencies, see if there is a office of small and disadvantaged business utilization office or what we refer to as OSDBU. This office is very important to you as you market to the federal government because federal agencies that have a small business office, there's a small business liaison there that will help navigate you through the process. It will help navigate you in meeting those key agencies that have a need for the product our service and will help you set up meetings with those agencies. And then another important person are the end users. This group is very influential in getting the most qualified contractor involved in a bid or onto a relevant contract. Although each of these customers will be interested in different facets of your offering, they all want to know the benefits of awarding a contract to you, your pricing model, and the procurement vehicles are the contracts that you hold. So as I had mentioned earlier, the um, government's fiscal year runs from October to September. So you want to be strategic in how you approach those quarters with the federal government. So the first quarter, you should be focused on raising awareness and relationship building. You want to make sure that things are updated as far as your marketing message. Um, your website, your capability statement. And then second in the third quarter of the government fiscal year is when you should really focus in on starting up lead generation campaigns. And then the last quarter is often focused on last minute offers and awareness campaigns to help your company secure its share of busy season, season buying agencies rush to use the remaining budget dollars. So in the last quarter of the federal government, um, if you've been marketing the previous quarters and have created that relationship, has had you've had follow-up, you call them every so often just to stay on top and to keep that relation relevant, um, that last quarter comes and they may think of you because they have to spend those dollars. And then also use your month-to-month -month outreach activities, such as new newsletters and social media, to keep your company brand in front of your government customers in their prospects. So when we talk about the federal government, we say speak the government language. In many companies, you may be familiar with the commercial side of, of terms and languages, but the federal government can be very different. And many companies use their commercial messaging and marketing collateral for government agencies, and it won't and, it, and hope it will resonate, but it doesn't. 
the government has entirely different requirements and objectives versus a commercial buyer. Take time to understand agency goals and challenges, rework your message, and some things you can ask yourself as you may look to do business with the federal government. What are our agency's challenges and what are their need? And do you have a product or service that can help the government accomplish what it needs? And has anyone else in government benefited from your offering? You want to list your contract vehicles, small business status or certification in your NAICS codes or industry standards. Um, you wanna stress your contracting experience in the past government experience, whether it's prime or subcontracting relationship. And the other thing you want to think about within government, um, like on the commercial side, you might say increase your profits, but in the federal government, what is important is helping an agency meet their small business goals. So as you market to federal agencies, you want to see where they are on their goals. Are they meeting their goals? Did they exceed their goals? And that's a good place to look as you market to um, the federal government. And then you want to call and you want to make an, an appointment. You want to introduce your business. You want to provide your business card your capability statement in your business website. You wanna give buyers another opportunity to see who you are and what you can do. And then you can also use the small business specialist to help prep you for a meeting with a particular agency. And then you want to um, always build relationships with the decision makers and being the first to inquire about an opportunity may be enough to be the successful contractor. You want to be able to network. You want to attend traditional trade shows and agency events. You want to attend pre-bid conferences. You want to attend business matchmaking events. And again, you still want to keep in contact with the small business office. And then another way is the submitting a bid. And because that is noticed within the federal government by contracting officers, when I visited with contracting officers, they, they said they keep note of companies that bid on full and open competitions and, and to compare to those that may bid on those or submit a bid on a set aside. But you'll be surprised how observant contracting officers are when you submit a bid because that's an informative way, uh, an indirect way of advertising of who you are. And then we can look at prime contracting and subcontracting. And prime contracting means a contract or contractual action entered into by the United States. So the prime contractor controls relationship, is responsible for the contract, but you can be or consider to be a subcontractor to the prime. And why would you consider those things? But being a subcontractor can help you build um, capacity. This will um, help you land the contract, gain experience, and build a solid platform for future opportunities. Large prime contractors may be required to subcontract and su submit small business subcontracting plans. Businesses may consider teaming or subcontracting with small business federal contracting, but the thing subcontracting can help you is gain experience and expand your opportunities because you will find within the federal government that no two agencies work alike, that it's always a learning curve. So it's good when you can gain experience and expand your opportunities. And then I briefly want to mention to you today, um, SBA Surety Bond Guarantee Program. And this program is available to any small business who cannot get bonding um, the traditional way. This is where SBA guarantees um, a bond through an authorized surety agent, and they can put in place a bid performance or payment bond. This program enables surety companies to support small businesses having difficulty obtaining bonding. And then the bonds that are listed there, and for each government and private sector contract up to six point. $5 million, and for each direct federal contract, the limit is $10 million. 
If you are a small business that cannot get bonding the traditional way, and you want to build capacity in that way and use the SBA Surety Bond Guarantee Program, you can go directly to our website and click on to find authorized agent. And they're listed, excuse me, on a local level and on a national level. And the SBA and the surety agent can put a bond in place in three to five days. And then I wanna go over some of the resources um, that are available to you as well. This program, the 7J Management and Technical Assistance Program um, is for our 8A contractors, but it's also for any small business that meets the eligibility guidelines. This information is on our website. These are free online executive education courses um, that will help you learn government contracting. And it covers areas of accounting, business development, compliance, contract management, financial analysis, marketing, and strategic and operational planning. Again, this program is available to 8As and all small businesses that meet the eligibility requirements. And then what I really want to bring up today, uh, the other resources where you see SBA resources, the business opportunity specialist, that position is for 8A certified companies. So companies, businesses that are certified in the 8A program, have an assigned business opportunity specialist for nine years to help them navigate through the program. Another key um, person you should know within SBA is the SBA Procurement Center representative. Their role is very significant. They work directly with federal agencies, making sure they sit aside on behalf of small businesses. They also conduct the su surveillance reviews on small businesses. So the procurement center representatives roles are very important. And then a vital resource I mentioned throughout the presentation is the Apex Accelerators. A new name, they used to be called the Procurement Technical um, Assistance Center. And the, they can help you get registered to do business with the, with the government. Um, they help businesses with registering in the proper databases find bids and contracts, they put on trainings, they put on workshops. And about a week ago or so, I went to a meet the buyer and they had a number of purchasing people from, from, the, from federal government to non-federal agencies, to the state, to the city, to so many. And so they put on a lot of things that will help you get in front of a buyers in one event and you can market to um, different tables at their event. Um, there are some other resources that are on here of uh, marketing resources as you take time to go over the information and other resources such as U.S. spending in the GSA subcontracting directory. So we're looking at um, finding a promising opportunity. After finding a promising opportunity, it's time to submit your bid. A few things to remember. Having lower prices isn't always better. Demonstrating past experience is usually key to successfully bending. Past successes and great customer references can be a big help. Target the agency's needs, goals, and history to demonstrate why your businesses is the best. An oral presentation may be required. Submitting a bid will officially place your company into consideration for the work contract. And requesting a debrief, this is very important. Debriefings help you understand why your business won or lost a bid. It is very powerful opportunity to learn which parts of your marketing and business bidding strategies are effective and which need improvement. Selling to the federal government is a much more transparent process and many federal contractors request debriefings on a regular basis. If your company loses a bid, you have the right to request a debriefing to find out why. The contracting officer must explain your strengths and your weaknesses. And that's just a brief overview of basic information um, for government contracting. Um, just who are some of the resources? Where can you find contracting um, opportunities? Some of the questions um, you can ask yourself. Um, do you have some of the key things in place to do business with the federal government? Because it's, it's a huge um, area to work in, but can be 
um, very, it can give you a lot of opportunities and you can think about being a prime contractor or subcontractor, or you can join, um, have a joint venture or a teaming agreement. So there are a lot of scenarios you can look at, but I encourage you to use the resources that are available to you. But um, I'm gonna give this back to you, TJ, that's all I have. And thank you for the opportunity. Okay, so um, everyone, if you have any questions, please feel free to add them in the chat and I will get to, um, get to your questions. Uh, I know a lot of this may seem very daunting and um, difficult to wade through, but I promise you it's not. A lot of the times, all you really have to do is get started or at least look through a lot of these applications. Um, if you ever need assistance with any of the wording of anything that you're putting down for the bids, we're here to help you with um, a lot of that. Um, Donnell, if there's anything or if there's one thing you want everyone to know about the process and um, the, the contracting system, what is one thing you would want everybody to know on this webinar today? The one thing I would want you to know, you're not by yourself, that there's an agency that, as I keep mentioning, the Apex Accelerators, that's what they're there for. They're commissioned to help small businesses in every area of contracting. You don't have to do this by yourself. And a lot of times when you go to bid, you may need the procurement history. You'll go to the Apex Accelerator. Um, you need to get registered or you found a certification program that will benefit your business. And you may not fully understand it. You, again, that is what that resource is there for. And, and when you look at federal contracting, um, the procurement center representatives, they are a resource. The resources also in federal agency, if you reach out to the small business office, the liaison, they, are, they have created a number of resources to help small business because it can be daunting. And so I just really encourage you, if you don't have the information, reach out to a TJ, reach out to myself, because we're going to connect you to those free resources that are going to navigate you through the process. Okay, I have a couple of questions. Um, one of them is, can a, can a new business have opportunities? Yes. For instance, um, if you're, I hope I'm just not projecting this, if you're a woman-owned small business or a hub zone, you just need to meet the eligibility requirements and you can apply for the program. And, and when I was talking about getting experience, those are two good programs to get experience in because there's not a lot of reporting requirements, but it gives you an avenue of what it, to learn what it takes to do business with the federal government. And as I stated in the presentation, no two agencies work the same, but if you can be part of a certification program, it is only a vehicle. It does not guarantee you contracts but how well you market and build those relationships, that's what's going to guarantee you a contract. And I will say there are a lot of events out there that you could attend. Um, I will try, we will try to make sure to include them in our newsletter, but going to those events, um, showing your face, getting out there and networking, that is one of the ways that I always tell people um, that that's the way to build those relationships and um, get your name and your face in front of people. Um, is there a checklist available to work through to accomplish all required tasks for success? Like checklist to, for the applications? I, I think that's maybe mean. Um, yes, and if, I, they're, if they're talking about SBA certifications, on the website at www.sba.gov, you scroll over federal contracting, it will give you all the certification programs. One thing that SBA has done in most cases, I know for the women-owned small business and for the 8A, um, there's a knowledge base. You want to go to the knowledge base because that's where the checklists are. And that checklist will be very helpful to you. With the women-owned small business on the knowledge base, it, only, it also has trainings for when you apply, when you submit. If you go over in another area, it gives you the screenshots of what the application looks like. So SBA has done a 
better job of having information there for you as you apply for the programs. And so does HubZone. I will agree with that. Even if it's asking for a particular document, normally there's a little eye with a circle next to it. If yes. you click on that little eye, it'll tell you exactly what that document is. Um, once again, if you're not sure what that document may be, copy and paste it, send it to me, be like, hey, TJ, what, what is this? And I'll respond really quick just to let you know, you know, oh, this is what this is. Um, so those are some of the things that we could do to assist you, but they do a really, really good job um, with all the checklists, um, with all the descriptions. Um, even still, like I was telling Donnell earlier, sometimes when it asks and you don't know, it's probably because you don't have it. Um, some of these programs, I think they ask questions for businesses that may have been in business for a while. But of course, if you haven't been in business for two or three years, you may not know what that means. You may not have that document. That's okay. Just move forward. Um, but um, always make sure to ask. Check and in to I, see. If I may say this, and one thing I think I failed to mention, opportunities of 25000 and below are not public. Those are local opportunities. And so that's where you have to identify federal agencies on the local um, level and begin to knock on their doors for those that have a need for the product or the service you provide. And there's a lot of opportunities of opportunities of $25,000 and below. And again, the Apex Accelerators can help you with that as well. Oh, wow, okay. Good one. Um, when you have your VET business certification, does it also count as an individual state certification? That's a very good question. I know it's a federal certification, but does it count at the state? I'll tell you this. I will send um, TJ the 1-800 number. It's dedicated to veteran certification questions. They do a really good job in getting back with you. That's where I will send to you, TJ. And would okay. you please send it to that person or whomever? I am starting the email so I don't forget your name. So I know there's another question from another person that I, so there's two emails that I'll send out personally. Um, let me see, I'm making sure I didn't miss any questions. All right, if that is it, um, just a reminder, I will share um, a link to this recording and I will share the PowerPoint presentation to everyone who attended today. Um, if there's no more questions, we'll go ahead. I'm a bit as well. Hold on, wait. Okay. Um, yes, Richard, I will send this, the email to you as well. And then are there any grants out here available? If you follow, if you sign up for our um, newsletter, that's that is um, linked on our website. Normally we try to include any grant opportunities that we see out there. Um, so there are some grant opportunities and sometimes they're very specific, but we do add those into our newsletter. And as always, you can always check out grants.gov or hello, Alice. Signing up for those two um, websites the grant opportunities will be um, sent directly to your email. So that's grants.gov and Hello Alice. Those are two resources that you could use to find. Um, please send me the email and info on grants. Um, please go ahead and sign up for our newsletter if you want more information on grants. We would not be able to send information on grants to everyone, but we do post them weekly in our newsletter. Any grants that we find out there, we do post those in our newsletter. Otherwise, sign up for grants.gov and hello, Alice. Um, so the website is the iowacenter.org and you can also um, find information on our social media pages. Um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. To find the link to the newsletter, you go to the iowacenter.org, scroll all the way to the bottom, 
and the link to the newsletter will be at the bottom. Um, since we have a couple of seconds left, I will go ahead and do that. Um, if there's any more questions, please feel free to ask them. If, if I may say this, TJ, just like TJ, TJ said, there are a lot of events out there that will get your faces in front of key people. But one thing to watch out with agencies um, is when they have matchmaking sessions, that those are really helpful too. And I agree with her. And like you have your Iowa source link and a lot of places to go to identify what events and activities are out there. And honestly, I'm going to reach out to Amy Coolers um, from IEDA to do a presentation on the state of Iowa contracting. Um, I know a lot of people was interested in this one. So I'm assuming that people will be interested in contracting with the state of Iowa and also that targeted small business certification. So thank you everyone for joining us today and um, follow up with us um, on our website and check out those events and we will see you next time. Thank you, Donnell. Thank, thank you everyone. You.